Okay, Poker Tov. Today's Daf is Tzadi Dalid, 94, and uh, we pick up at the bottom of Tzadi Gamalit Bet. We are still dealing with this halacha about the blood of a chathas that's bladders on a garment, that you have to go ahead and launder it in the Azara. Um, and uh, yeah, we continue with this Mishnah on the bottom of Tzadi Gamalit Bet. Um, uh, Nita's alpha or so until now we've been talking about like what type of blood are we talking about, what stage before it's put on the altar, when it's fit for the altar. Um, now we talk about what type of a garment it hits. So, Nita's alpha or um, actually who shot. So, let's say it's not something that's a normal garment, it's not cloth, it's actually leather skin of an animal that has not yet been flayed. You know, you're going to have that obviously in the base of Mikta, mm. right? You slaughter the animal. Now, of course, remember, you slaughter the animal, blood is, is splashing all around or spraying all around. That's not this halacha because it hasn't yet been caught on a clean charis. But after it's caught on a clean charis, you could imagine that, you know, some of it splashes or you're running mm. to the bait to the mispeas. Anyway, so it hits the skin on an animal before the animal has been flayed. So it's the obvious assumption is that once the skin has been flayed, it's considered enough of a garment, of a baguette, even though it's just like it's not even processed leather yet, you know, and certainly not worked into a piece of clothing. Um, but that would seem to be obvious that this halacha would apply. But the whole question is before it's been flayed, at what stage is this considered like it's raw materials to make a garment out of? So that you do not have to wander. shot once it's been flayed, tone kivus, then you have to Rebihuda. The other chiddush here, in addition to the fact that this is considered a beged once it's been flayed, is that you know, the idea of laundering is a relevant term, right? Laundering is something we normally apply to cloth. So you might have said maybe you know cleaning or whatever, but since the pasuk of the Torah is about the beged and yichabes to launder, so you might have thought this isn't relevant to leather. So the point is that it is. Yes, Charlie. So it may maybe most of them are going to be turned into garments. But what if as the, as I fly, I say, I'm going to turn this into a safer Torah? Right, or or you're going to make it into a you know a table. Or something. Yeah, right. Yeah, so that's also a good point as well, right? So what makes it a garment? We'll see. So those are good questions. So this will we'll get this to be developed in the Gemara. Now that's Rabbi Yehuda's. Yehuda's <coughs> only from the time that it's been even from the time it's been flayed. At what stage for him? Maybe for him it would have to be processed more. We also been ignoring the fact that leather requires tanning and a processing and so on. And as Charlie said, who knows even what use you're going to put it to. Okay, so that's that debate, and we'll see about that in the Gemara. Now the Stam Mishnah continues. Um, um, Ainu tom kibus kibus. You do not have to wander. El makom hadam. Number one is this is now the Stam Mishnah talking. You only have to do it the exact place the blood hit. It doesn't require laundering the entire garment. The Dabashu Ro'il Kabel Tuma. It has to be a garment or some type of thing that's fit for becoming Tame. Um, simple example that would not be that is let's say it's a very tiny piece of cloth, mm -hmm. so so small that it's not usable in any way as a mm -hmm. garment. Okay. Um the Ro'il Kivus, and it has to be something that can be laundered. And you might think that that's exactly the issues around a piece of leather. A, is it fit yet for becoming tame in terms of the stage of processing? B, just physically, is it something which laundering makes sense? Okay. And now, the, now it continues. This applies to whether it's a garment, meaning like cloth or sackcloth, which is not made, you know, which is made out of like hair of a goat or whatever, or whether it's even leather. Okay, so uh, to which again was sort of implicit by both opinions before. The question was what stage of processing of the leather. Um, to unin kivus, they have to be laundered. But kivus makam kadosh, and it takes place in the azara itself. The shvirs klicheres makam kadosh. Similarly, which is what we're going to get to in the rest of this parak, the Glen Torah talks about if you cook a chatas, that if it's in it, you cook it in a uh, earthenware vessel, then the, uh, it absorbs the taste of the chatas, and then the next day it becomes nosar. So what he's supposed to do? So you know, this is where we get some of the halachot about kalim from. So you, we go ahead and you can't get it out of the earthenware vessel, so you have to destroy it, break it. But that breaking also has to happen in a holy place because it still is from the chatas. You're not allowed to remove it from the base of mikdash. Um, so again, these are these are now the halachas. We're beginning to transition from the blood of the chatas to the halachas of cooking the chatas. So the scalding and the rinsing of a metal vessel, of a copper vessel, you don't have to there destroy it. You can actually get the tastes out. This is like the idea of koshering. Okay, we'll see there's some special things that are special rituals because of the chatas, not, limit, not just the loss of koshering. But anyway, also that has to be in a holy place, in the other. 
And this, the halach of the blood, is more stringent about achatas and other korbanot, because we're going to see that the other halachas, for example, about the cooking and the vessels, applies to also the other korbanot as well. But this halach of the blood only applies to achatas. Okay, nice little summary. Let's take a look at the Gemara. Minani Mili, where's this from? Is that also then? Um, no, the, this is just about the blood. No, that's just a chattas, right. And it is an interesting question about that first opinion. Who is it? Rabbi Eliezer, that makes a chattas like an asham way in the beginning. And he, uh, he usually pops up. And we also had his position about bringing from the blood of a chattas into the Kodesh, whether that, uh, you know, invalidates the chattas. Does that also apply to an asham? So would he say the same thing here about the blood of a chattas and the laundering? That's a good question. Yeah, Rabbi Eliezer, I don't know, it's a good question. Okay, Minani Mili, where do you get this thing from, this issue around the leather, and this debate around the leather? Tana Rabbanana, Rabbi's taught. Beget, a garment. Ainly yellow beget. Then Rabbis or Mishu shot. How do you know even something like a leather what it's been played, which is not a garment in the sense that it's like not woven or something? And also, as our Charlie points out, who even knows what you're going to do with it? Talmud Lamar, Asher Yisa Aleha. Okay, and so we sort of bracket the word beget. We read the end of the verse. It says anything that it's splattered on. To chabes, you should cut launder. Yachashani marba or achila shot. Maybe it should, if that's true, anything it splatters on, maybe even before the leather has been flayed. The verse says, Beg it. So the sort of the, uh, you know, expansion, it's sort of like a prat uklal, but it's, uh, you know, anyway, it's some type of a balance between those two words, sort of like a, a meat for reboy. Anyway, so the concept of beget expanded, it's not limited to a beget, it's limited to anything that is fit for becoming tame. Now, if that's true, you don't need the concept of garment at all. What would you say if it like splatters on a table? Right, that's fit for becoming tamei. It doesn't have to fit the category of garment. So we're going to see in the Gemara that that's going to be a little bit different because that's something that you don't actually launder. You just like scrape it off. But that has to do with the material. You know, if I've got something that like you can launder, that's not. I don't know. I've got a. I've got a couch that's got. You know, that's got a. Uh, you know, what do you call it? Right. Uh, that's. Uh, it's not exactly a garment, but. It, that gets absorbed into the, into the material of the couch, right? So anyway, so that seems to be, yes, we are expanding it to all things that can become tame. It doesn't have to be defined as a beget, okay? But it has to be able to be ra'oi, fit to become tame. Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Eliezer says beget, ain't the other beget. I only know beget. I only know a sock. How do I know to include a sackcloth? Chol mine bigadim, all types of bigadim. Tabulomar asher aleha. Similar, looking at the end of the verse. Maybe I'll even include leather after it's been flayed. No, it has to be able to, it has to be Mekabel Tuma. Now it sounds just exactly the same as the previous one, but the difference is the one word, as opposed to Mekabel Tuma. So Ra'oi fit to suggests that it's not maybe yet able to be Mekabel Tuma. It's it's fit to like uh, you know maybe some final stage is needed, but it's in the cat. But as opposed to mikabel tuma means right now to be mikabel tuma, and somehow this issue of flayed leather for is exactly the point of debate. Now, what exactly is it about? So the way Rashi explains, I mean the Gemara is going to ask by the minute for other examples. But the way Rashi explains the difference is like this: leather after it's been flayed. Is, it requires one more thing to be considered fit to, to, to be able to be Mekabel Tumah, which is that you have to have your your intention in order to use it in the state that it is. Because, you know, this leather, you could do a lot of things with it. You could still want to cut it and shape it and do ibud, you know, do tanning. I mean, there's a long tosos discusses this issue about really leather can be Mekabel Tumah before it's gone through a process of tanning and processing. I mean, who you, now you could use a raw piece of leather, you know, as a type of a, uh, like a floor uh, rug or something like that, as a throw rug, you know, maybe even without a process of tanning. You probably still have to scrape it and remove uh, like whatever. Whatever. But anyway, so it's a pretty, this is a little surprising in general, because in general we normally think that leather to be in a state to be Mikado Tuma has, has needs a little more processing. But the way Rashi explains the debate, the only difference, um, and the language, you know, might also have suggested that the uh, second position here, the uh, Rebbe Eliezer's position, more requires it to be similar to a beged, because he emphasizes the word beged. But the way in the end Rashi explains it and what's going to emerge from the Gemara, um, although again, it's a little question, like you'll see the Gemara's a little funny, but is this issue about something that physically is ready to be Makadal Tumah, so it's Ra'oi, 
but it's not yet mekabel tumah because it's lacking your intent to use it in this state. And if you intend to sort of wait or do more processing or whatever, then it's not going to be mekabel tumah. And that's the debate. Physically, it's in the state that it could be, but it's not yet halachically in the state to be mekabel tumah because it, it lacks your machshava, your intent to use it in some in this state. And that's what we're going to say the debate is with this leather that has been flayed, but not every flayed leather is yet ready to be used as a vessel, as a type of a thing, right? Only in the, So that requires the one thing it lacks is your intent. Yes. Yeah, I mean, nobody uses raw leather for anything. Even for a throw rug? No, I mean, you know, you still have to, I mean, other, it'll decay, it'll stink. Uh, well, is it just about scraping the stuff off of it, or is it even, is it about processing the leather itself? There has to be at least a little bit of processing. Yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, that's what Tosas asks. I also would have assumed that. Oh. That, 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 and you know, in general, we tend to assume that until stuff, the leather is processed. It's yeah, I mean, how it's processed depends. I mean, the processing. When you see all stuff, of those examples, of like, you know, about like in the Native Indians and the teepees with their leather on the floor, you know, the sort of like, you know, that was after it was flayed from the animal, they would, it would get processed. Yeah, I don't know enough about that. That's <laughs> anyway, okay, so let's take a look. So, the Gemara is going to look for other examples of something. That physically is ready to be mekabel tumah, but halachically is not yet mekabel tumah because it lacks the proper machshava. Yes. Yeah. It's the same thing. Of, we're talking, a beket is sort of like a clear here. That's what the yeah. trash is. So it's yeah. the same gemara. It has to be. Gemar Malacha, right, like exactly. That's yes, for category. those who have learned Kalim, it is in the category of Gemar Malacha. That is correct. Okay, and the interesting thing is that we are seeming to move away from this concept of, as we're going to see, from this concept of a garment. It could be like a rug. It could be whatever. Okay, and then the question is, so what if the blood hits, uh, you know, hits my cup? You know, you know. So or you know, so we'll see about that in the Gemara. Okay, so my benai. So again, we're asking, it's a funny my benai. What do you mean my benai? What's benayu is this leather after it's been flayed. But like the Gemara's question is sort of like, give, some, give me some other examples of something in this category that is like physically, you know, as Hanan correctly introduces the phrase gemar malacha or could be gemar malacha, but it's dependent on your machshava. It's not yet considered done because it lacks your machshava to declare that this is sufficiently done. Okay, because some things, you know, when they're at a stage of processing, it doesn't, it's not about mashava, just objectively, it's, it's makabel tumah. But this, it, it really depends on whether you've decided to use it at this stage or not. So what's another example about that? My benayu. So amar bai matlit pchutam inshallah benayu. If you have a little um, type of a patch of, of a, le of a um, we're not no longer dealing with leather, we're looking at other examples. A little type of a cloth patch. Okay, so it's small. It's less than three finger widths by three finger widths. So normally, if something is that small, it's not considered to be fit to be used. But if I've got a small enough tear in my garment, I would want to use that as a patch to sew over my garment. So what will determine whether or not that is makabel tumag is whether I intend to use it for that purpose or not. Okay, mandama ra'oi, hanami ra'oi. This is considered physically fit to be able to be makabel tumah. Dibai chashivale. Because if you intend to use it as a patch, it will be in that category. But right now, if something Tame were to touch it, it would not be Mechabel Tumah. It would not be Tame because you have not yet had that intent. Mandama Davar HaMechabel Tumah has to actually be Mechabel Tumah. Ha Mialif Labas Kibbele Tumahi. It's not yet Mechabel Tumah because you haven't had that intent. So we're going to do a list of things that physically could be if you had the right Machshava. It's not objectively in a state where any normal person would use it as such. That doesn't require machshava. It's in a state where, if that's your intent, then we'll say that it's makat el tumah. But it's lacking your intent. Um, okay, Rava Amar Rava says, I'll give you an example of something that is finished. But what's getting in the way of it being considered makabel tumah is your intent is that you are the white holding up, you know, in, in the case of a little patch, you could speed up its entering into the world of Kabbalah tumah by saying, I'm ready to use it even though it's only this tiny. But sometimes your thought is holding it back from that world. Here you were, you made this gorgeous uh, shirt. Okay, but normally, any, under other uh, normal circumstances would be makabel tumah, but you want a way to embroider something on the shirt. So as far as you're concerned, the shirt isn't done yet. So now it's your machshava is getting in the way. But nevertheless, we're in a similar halal situation. Physically, it's it's able to be makabel tumah. It's ra'oi, but it's not yet makabel tumah because your tum, your thought is holding it back from being considered to be complete. 
Okay. Kachiv shemal alitzura ikav inayu. Manda maraoi hanami raoi. This is fit in the sense of physically fit. The by mevatale lemachshavte. You could all you have to do is decide. You know what? Forget the embroidering, and then poof. Now it'll be able to be makabel tuma, okay? Uman damar davar makabel tuma. It has to actively be makabel tuma. Hashem yalav baski buli tuma. Now it is not yet in that state. Rava Amar, so the one of these or whatever ika da ami Rava Amar, because Rava was just Amar a second ago. Anyway, utzpa the chisha bala lekatsa ika binayu. We're talking about some type of a like I said, like a floor mat, okay? That you have thought about it to um you know that you're going so now as a floor mat actually it is considered fit to be makabel tuma okay we're now presumably so the only thing is that you um are uh you know it could either be a piece of leather it could be like a rug okay but you know it's a little jagged at the edges and so on maybe if it's this leather that you just flayed and it's fit to be used as a floor mat but you've decided you want to trim it it's similar to the other example about making the uh, embroidered garment. If you hadn't decided you wanted to trim it, it would it would objectively be considered to be in a state of a floor mat and be able to be makabel tuba. Okay, mandam ruoi hanami ruuya, so it's fit. Mandam or davar makabel tuma halad makabel tuma adam katzaleg. Since you've intended to trim it, it's not going to be makabel tuma until you trim it. So that's a little bit different because here it sounds like you need another physical act of trimming it where really it should have said what it said before which is that you could have just decided you no longer need to trim it and then that would have been okay okay so rashi sort of throws that in so either key to the trim it or decide you don't need to trim it okay um hatanya and we talked similarly in a brighter hatanya sometimes is a support not a challenge so your intent to trim it holds back until you're getting to ready to trim so that was a series of examples. So now we have framed the debate. Again, it's pretty funny because normally you would think leather needs a certain degree of tanning. But we have framed the debate to be about something that physically is fit to be makabel tuma, but not yet able because your thought is getting in the way. Okay. Ain't on kibus. Kibus. Now, the only thing that needs it is, okay, something that is, um, what do you call it? What does the Mishnah say? Um, oh, it has to be oil makabel tuma. Oh, it's only the place where the blood hit, not the entire thing. And it has to be oil kabel tuma and fit to be laundered. So let's check about those three criteria, or those two criteria. Minani Mili, first of all, how do you know you only do it at the place the blood is hit? Maybe if it was on a part of the garment, you have to do the whole garment. So we could read it mean the entire garment on which the blood hit, you have to launder the entire garment. But we're reading it as a share yizeh. Like the place where the blood splattered, that's what you have to wander. Only where the blood is. Now it has to be something fit to be makabel tuma. So the Gemara says, stop, we just sort of said that before. Stamak Reb Yehuda. Okay, stam is like Reb Yehuda because it didn't say davar hamikabel tuma. Now we've learned that there's a subtle difference. The difference between Reb Yehuda and Reb Eliezer is actively makabel tuma or ra'oi, fit if you just have the right intention. So since the mission used the phrase ra'oi, which suggests not yet able to be makabel tuma, that's like Reb Yehuda about this leather before, after you flayed it, even though you have not yet, you know, had the intention to make it considered done. Okay, now. So what happens if the blood gets on it and the person hadn't decided what? So decision. then it depends if, so again, certain things are considered objectively normal people would use it at this state and then it doesn't require your mashava. Things that normal people aren't, don't, aren't yet ready to use at this state, then it depends, then you need your mashava to make it fit. Okay, so when it's in a black and white sort of location, you know, you know, then your mashava is not relevant. If it's in a gray zone, that's where your mashava determines like which side it falls on. You just say if you're using it, then that? Yeah, well, using it sort of constitutes your mashava, you know. Right. You don't have to constitute to say I hereby whatever you're using it as a reflection of the fact that you now consider it to be used right that is correct okay but we're not necessarily that's not necessarily the case the case is this leather sitting around whatever it is okay now it has to be fit to be laundered to bar greater who to exclude a case where it hit my mug because that's something when you scrape it off you don't wander it off okay so that actually would be excluded from this Allah even though it's a clea even though it's makabel to my Okay, whether a sack, whether whether like a garment or a sackcloth. Okay, so the um, main and whether it is leather. So now we're going to go back to the leather and look at it not from this perspective of mekabel tumah, 
let's forget that whole issue. How, what stage of the tanning and of your planning, tanning and planning. Anyway, it is, you know, fine, fine. You got your, you got yourself a wonderful, gorgeous leather jacket. Nobody has a question that it's Macabell Tuma. Now we got another problem though, because one of the criteria is that it has to be fit for laundering. You know, do you wander a leather garment? Is that the phrase you use? Meaning maybe you put a little Destroy water it. on it, sort of <laughs> scrape off the blood. But if we've excluded when it hits my table and it hits my mug, that I go ahead and I scrape it off, I don't launder it off. How does the concept of laundering apply to leather? That's our question now. Okay, so the main rod, the or barkivus, are you telling me leather is something where the concept of laundering is a meaningful concept? Raminu, I'll ask you on this. And now we're going to look at a discussion about Shabbos, because there's an Isra on Shabbos of laundering. Okay, here's a very, here's a good halacha, okay? You're not allowed to, if, uh, it's so funny how people don't know this uh, halacha, you know, whatever. I see people, very firm people sometimes, you know, something hits their, hits their shirt. Totally. Like at, 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 totally you know, at a meal, yeah, that, all of a sudden they take some seltzer, they go like no, this or whatever. That's I, a know, I, I know what to do. Right? See, anyway. we're an educated crowd. Yeah, yeah we, I'm we've very been, impressed. We've been, so we've been learning with you. Excellent. Okay, anyway. <coughs> so, okay, so now I got a question. So you all know that if a little uh, wine or whatever hits your shirt, you can't go ahead and do this with water. Yeah, that. Now, let's say a little bit of wine hits your glasses. Are you allowed to wipe it off your glasses? You have to see. Of course you can. No, I forget you have to see. The answer is yes. That's not laundering. That's just on a hard surface. Yeah. You can go ahead and just wipe something off a hard surface. Let's say I got some mud on my nice leather shoes, okay? Okay. If I got some mud on my night on my sneakers, which is like a fabric and it gets absorbed, right? I can't go ahead and put water on my on my fabric sneakers and get the mud out. Let's say I got on the surface of my nice leather shoes. What do you think? Can I go ahead and scrape it off and use some water and get it off? Depends if it's concerned. Uh, well, that's this question. Yeah, I'm asking, what do you think the halacha is? Well, it's going to. It might depend what kind of leather it is, because some like some it's leather is not some, some, like some leather is leather. All right. All right. Okay. Good answer. Let's take a look. Let's see what the Gemara says. Okay. So, is leather is something in which wandering applies? Right, isn't there something that's supposed to be tovel in a mikra too? If it gets to the tummy. What? Is there anything? Is there any way to? What do you mean? Where is, is there? Is a concept of let's say leather thing becomes tummy? Mm -hmm. Is, is there a concept? Yeah. To, so how are you supposed to dip it in a in a mikvah either? I mean, like you know, huh? I don't understand. What is? If I put something leather in a mikvah, won't it get ruined? It might be. I mean, how you? Because that's like that's a separate conversation. Like, how to, let's point. say you've got so what? But whatever. That's a separate conversation. Like whole question about what are you supposed to do with like a uh, uh, yeah, what do you call it? A toaster. You know, you have to put it in a mikvah when you buy a new toaster. So there's a whole lot, a lot of shit to go, well, if it gets ruined, you don't have it. Anyway, somebody, so I know, I know some rabbi says, yeah, I do it. I put it in a mikvah. I just let it sit out for 24 hours, dries out. It's fine. Anyway, whatever. Okay, moving on. But anyway, but whether it's going to get ruined is a different conversation. All right. The name of the word. All right, let's move on. Water. Then you put water on it. That's I'd say maybe my half. The name of the word barkivus. This suggests that leather is something which laundering is a relevant concept. Raminu, I'll ask you on this. I saw a lot of Let's say you've got on your uh, on your garment a little like a some something of spoiling thing. I mean, Tosla says basically means a little bit of like uh, of like manure or something like that. Okay, uh, like a chicken manure or something. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you go ahead and you wipe it away with it with with a cloth. Haisa shall or now let's say the garment or al shall or whatever it was on a leather garment. So no sinalahamayim, you can even use water. So obviously you can get stuff off if you just you know use a rag to get it off. You're not using water, that's not laundering. But if it's on the leather garment, you can even use water because that's presumably not laundering. Okay, achetichla until you completely get it off. So there it seems like you can put a lot of water on a leather garment. It's not a problem. It's not considered laundering for Shabbos. So if it's not considered laundering for Shabbos, how does it require laundering by this case of a blood of a chatos? It should sort of be like, you know, hitting my mug. It should be, you know, if it's not relevant for laundering, this halacha doesn't apply. Amar Abayi. So Abayi says, Lokash, it's not difficult. Whether the concept of laundering applies to leather, when, let's hold off for a second. It's a debate of the rabbis and others. So here exactly is going to be a debate about the salacha, the blood of a chathas, does it apply to leather things? So you have a garment or a sackcloth, launder it. Or if it's, some other, if it's like a vessel, you know, a fork, a table, a mug, or something leather, just scrape it off. Okay, 
It's not in the category of wandering. That's consistent with what we taught about Shabbos. So they put leather in the laundering side of the column. That does require laundering by the blood. But if it's a, some other type of, of it's a vessel, like again, something of wood or, or you know, or metal or something like that, then just scrape it off. So now what we're saying is that there's a debate whether the concept of laundering is relevant. I mean, everybody agrees physically you can put water on it, but would you call that laundering or would you call it getting it wet? And then if it gets so much into it, would you call it ruining it? Or would you call it laundering? So we're saying that's actually a debate. And presumably there would be an afkamina for the halach of blood, and there would be an afkamina for Shabbos, whether you're allowed to put water on your muddy shoes. So let's take a look. Kaman Azla Hadamar Bar Ashi. How does it go like this, which Rabbi Barashi said? Many times I was in front, front of Rav, and his, his the shoes got dirty on Shabbos, and he would go ahead and he would basically uh, rub them with the water in order to clean them off. There you go, Rav used water to clean off his muddy shoes. So you see that what it is not considered uh, laundering by leather. Or says, come on, drop on him. That's like the rabbis who argue on a chayrim. So now we're making it a debate. Is leather laundering relevant? There's Rabbana that say that it is not laundering and you don't have to worry about the blood thing and you don't have to worry about the Shabbos thing. And then there's a Cherim that says, no, laundering is a relevant concept by leather and therefore it is an issue with the blood. It is an issue with uh, with Shabbat. Now we're eventually going to get to the issue about maybe it depends what type of leather. So hold on, we're not done. So the man says like this, I'm a rabbi, says rabbi, or or lar bar is there really anybody that says that laundering is not relevant by leather? One minute, it's a pasuk, vaksiv, vabegen oha shesi oha erev o klopli ha oha shet chubay, tchubas, tchubas, Michael Tchubas? Okay, Ella, anyway, that is laundered, okay, and that's so in the whole context about, uh, what do you call it, about Sarat, right? Pretty sure that's the pasuk. Anyway, so it uses explicitly, yeah, it is the pasuk about Sarat, anyway, so it is. Uh, you go, you see that it is a. Uh, yeah. it, it is a. It, it yeah. You got the puzzle there. No, but that's a different puzzle. That's not the puzzle that we just quoted. That's a different puzzle with the or. Yeah. Yeah. Where is it? Are you for what? Fifty-eight. You know, not bad. Vayikra. Chabay to Sarah Hamanaga. That's the hair. Just show me here. Vayikra, one more time. You give me what? Nun ch. Nun ch. I got it. Vabegid oishes your evo kotli ha oishes to chabay. That is to chabay. The Sarah Hamanaga. The chubas trainees for there. So it's about Sarat. You launder them, and then if it's a rat goes away, then they become tahor. Fine. So you see, explicitly it uses the verb to launder by uh, by uh, what do you call it? By uh, by by leather garments or by leather so by leather vessels. It's a rashi. So so. Ella, I'm a rava. Says rava. So you can't say that there's no concept of laundering by leather. Ella, I'm a rava. Kra umas nisin berakim. Keep ligi bekashin. Okay, look. If it's soft leather. And then the, which presumably that means two things. It means number one, the stain gets inside, and it also means that the water can get inside to remove the stain that got inside. Right there, laundering is a meaningful concept, and everybody would agree that laundering would apply. So when the pasuk is talking about this case about the tsarat, yeah, that's talking about a soft leather. When our mishnah assumes that uh, the halach of blood and laundering applies to leather, it's soft leather. By hard leather. That's where you saw this debate of whether this halacha of blood applies to hard leather or not, okay? And yes, the halacha would still be, we would say that by hard leather, there's not a Shabbos problem. By hard leather, we can see that that's where there's a debate. We would side with the position that says there's not a Shabbos problem. But for soft leather, everybody would agree that laundering is relevant, okay? So let's read that again. Kra um, umasnisin, the pasuk in our Mishnah that says that it does apply, whether it's sarad or the blood, Rakin is by soft leather. Keep leaky bakashin. The debate that we quoted before about the blood issue, that's hard leather. And that also would be the Shabbos position, would be that it doesn't apply to hard leather. So what about this halacha that he would do it on Shabbos? If you're saying that that's a debate 
The Gemara says, fine, the cash in the yes, the Shabbos issue is debated. If it's hard leather, if it's soft leather, everybody agrees laundering is an issue and it falls into this category of tzarat and the blood, etc. Hard leather is a debate and the position that we allow it on Shabbos would, so, would be talking about hard leather and side with the opinion that laundering is not relevant to hard leather, but to hard leather. Okay, so now the Gemara says like this. We're not done yet. Hadar Rava then says Rava, Love me, see he dami. You know what? Forget what I said. It was nonsense. It wasn't correct. Neku name the cross. We get up and tell the pasuk. We're going to go ahead and order around the pasuk. Hey, you pasuk that said that there's a, the idea of laundering by leather. You're only talking about certain. Types we do of that all the time. I know. We do it all the time. I agree with you. Anyway, Milo Eskinan. Who's to say the pasuk isn't talking about a case? Bichli achsalagia. Okay, with the vessels of achsaladia, which is a certain type of hard leather. I assume that your uh, your uh, Steins up there or whatever tells you uh, what it is. We know that you know you get the, we have the, we we have these uh, cases. It's so funny. All of a sudden, you have to mention hard this special case that come from overseas. A minute ago, we were talking about your hard leather shoes on Shabbos, yeah. but whatever it is, anyway. Who are we to say that the Pusik is only talking about soft leather, which is so funny, as Michael said, we say it all the time, the Pusik's talking about X and not Y. But anyway, so therefore, the Pusik has to be talking about all types of leather. So now we got a problem, really? So laundering is relevant by all types of leather? Wait. The Kamarach Manini by Kivus, and nevertheless, you have to wander. Ella, my brother, so really the Rebbe said, he's not going to revise this whole point. He's just going to revise the question about what is the Pusik by Tzarat. The Pusik by Tzarat applies even by hard leather. Why? He says, Sarat, kivin de mi gufe kaparcha. Now, this is very interesting. I mean, it applies on stones. No, normally, <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Normally, well, although the verb leathering doesn't, uh, uh, laundering doesn't apply. That's the point. So anyway, but normally we think of Sarat as something, you know, very, uh, what do you call it? Like, uh, you know, uh, um, like miraculous or metaphysical. On the other hand, the Torah says, treat it like stains, launder it, see if it goes away, you know, and so on. So Ravi here is treating it very not miraculously. He says, look. Somehow from within the garment itself, some spot appeared. So the, that shows that somehow, like, you know, that, that even though it's hard leather, something might be going on inside the garment that caused the spot to appear. Like normally if it's hard leather, a stain comes from the outside. So it remains on the outside. So it's not about laundering. It's about getting some water on it and scraping it off. And it's all very surface. Laundering is about getting in. But since the tzaras appeared from nowhere, presumably it came from the inside. Okay, so therefore, that's where the Torah actually says, you gotta get the water deep in, even by hard leather, okay? So even the migufa kaparcha, since it sprouted out from the garment itself, you have to basically submerge it in water, re-soften it, get the water to like you know to penetrate inside in order to in order to do a good job. So here, basically, the Torah is telling you, and as Michael said, yeah, you might ruin it, okay. But that's the halacha here. So that's by the case it's around. I don't care hard or soft. Yes, you got to go ahead and really get the water into it. But normally. Back to our point before, normally by soft <coughs> launder, you know, water, you know, uh, and laundering is relevant, and that's our Mishnah, um, and where where we assume the halach of blood applies. Hard is debate is, is a debate, and hard there's a debate how the, whether laundering is relevant. It's a debate about blood, and it's a debate about Shabbat, and presumably the idea of Rav, who would clean his clo- uh, shoes on Shabbat, whatever, assumes that hard is not a problem by Shabbat. So we're still basically at that point. Hard is the debate. Obviously, our general, our, our sock is where we're going in that debate is hard is not a problem on Shabbat. It's not a laundering. Soft is where laundering is relevant. Charlie, you had a question before? Uh, no? Okay. I'm a Rav. If I've got a problem, here's the question I've got. Karimuk Satot. Let's say you're dealing with, okay, you know, uh, pillows, okay, and uh, and uh, blankets, okay, yeah. Diraki Ninu, the whole point of pillows and blankets is to be nice and soft, all right. Um, the Tnan, and we taught, Heiser Show Or, Nosin Alehamayim, Achetichle. We talked a minute ago about this little bit of a manure or whatever, and we said if it's on a garment, you can just use a, a rag. If it's on leather, you can go ahead and put water. Okay, that was the, the mission we started with on Shabbat. Do people remember that? Mm-hmm. Okay, but the case was a pillow. So what do you mean if it's leather, you can go ahead and put on water? Presumably, a pillow is soft, a soft leather. Now, of course, the funny thing is, is that I would not say the issue about soft versus hard is a question about, like, 
you know, whether like, I mean, I have a leather, like a leather couch, we would soft, you want to sit on it, right? You don't want to be stiff, but nevertheless, it's in a way in which it's not porous, right? I would sort of say that's the difference. Like, how is it, I mean, I know enough about leather, but it has to be like, how is it manufactured and treated in terms of whether it's porous or not, it has less to do with whether the leather is stiff leather or pliable leather, okay? But anyway, but with those, but that's the question being asked. It's presumably the pillow is something that is soft, and nevertheless, we're saying that it's not a Shabbos problem, even with soft leather to put water on it, okay? But Tanan Hai Sishal Or, Nosan Ulea Mai Macha Tichle, Ella Amarava, Kol Kivus, the Lace Like Hiskus, Lo Shmei Kivus. You know what? When it comes to leather, he's saying all laundering, but we're going to say in a minute it means leather. When it comes to leather, forget the soft versus the hard. That's not the point. The point is, if you just go ahead and put some water on leather and you scrape something off, whatever, you know, you get a lot of water, that's not laundering. Laundering, if, if there will be laundering by leather, it's going to require you to do kiskus, which is like the rubbing of it together like this. Okay? Without that, it's never going to be laundering by the leather. So forget the hard, soft distinction. Even soft leather... Okay, there is not going to be uh, laundering without a type of a rubbing together. So let's take a step back and see what we've got. Wait, but if I take my rag and it goes like this, you're rubbing the rag onto the leather, right? Well, no, I mean, a rubbing, no, it's not, I mean, unless it's a real, like, you know, no, like a rubbing that's getting it off of the surface is not the rubbing we're talking about. We're rubbing like you're sort of doing like this together in order that really is supposed to be like getting but it off. But just for leather, because like, I mean, you still can't put your right. shelter on well, your exactly, uh, shirt. Exactly, which is what the Gemara is going to say. <clears throat> okay? So, v'had ta'amar, lo shmei kibus, v'had ta'amar av chiyah barash, yisim yin tagin, ha'vi tamina kamein dorav, v'shach shechilei misani b'maya, and he basically would like, you know, rubs his uh, uh, shoes with water on Shabbat. in. That's like a type of a rubbing. Okay, a normal type of a, uh, 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 how does the English translate shikshuk? Rubbing, I mean, do they use different verbs there? Rinsing. Rinsing. All right, but I think rinsing also can actually be, it's like, it's, you know, it means, but it can mean like right, what Michael is describing. You know, it's like, you know, you're putting the water on and you're like sort of scraping as you're putting the water on. About kiskus, that should be kiskus, low, but not the type of a like, like a figure. friction rubbing, like it's about creating friction mm -hmm. and whatever and really rubbing together, okay? So basically the short version is, yes, you can clean off your shoes on Shabbos, your, your leather shoes. Well, you, and okay. apparently also uh, your couch. Uh, right, unless again, it's in a way that it's the stuff got into the pores mm -hmm. and it's a type of a rubbing that's getting below the surface, exactly. Okay, Ibarakin Ukadive Hakal, now, we're still not giving up it totally on our uh, hard versus soft uh, issue. Okay, we are saying that even that even by soft, it's only going to be a problem with this rubbing. Okay, so the problem on Shabbos, so this issue about that we're going to, I'm sorry. So shuk shuk, let, let me read, let me read this again. Uh, um, meaning this wasn't an answer yet, this was part of the implicitly. When he was saying you're allowed to sort of rinse your, your shoes on Shabbos, implicitly what he was telling us was rinsing you can do it, rubbing you can't do it. Okay, so you can't rub on Shabbos with the leather. What type of leather would that be true that you can't do this type of a vigorous rubbing? So here's where soft versus hard makes a difference. Okay, soft leather, that's where everybody would agree. So what we're doing is we're being more lenient. Before we said by soft leather, it would always be a problem. Now we're saying by soft leather, it's only a problem with this vigorous rubbing. Hard leather, okay, so there, um, uh, it is like a cherim, because for the right, Rabbana, they're they're gonna say there's yeah. never a problem, right. So basically what we've got is the is the following. I got to keep it all straight, okay? We have like this. We've got, first we said the difference was soft and hard. We said soft, it was kibus, okay? And hard, there was Rabbanan say no kibus, and Acherim say yes, okay? And we assume that the case of the, the shoes was the Rabbanan and hard. Okay, so we assume that was the case. Of <coughs> now, because we see that even on Shabbat, we allowed by the by the pillow or whatever to do a type of a water, we see that even by soft, that's not always kibbutz. So what we say is the following: is by soft kibbutz, it depends. By soft, if it is like the type of a, ru of a rubbing, 
okay, or the vigorous kiskus, right? the vigorous rubbing friction, you know, whatever, etc. Rubbing friction, etc. Then you're going to have kibus. Oops. Oops. Otherwise, you know, just just the certain and other, you know, otherwise, no, no kibus. So even by soft, you can you can you can put water on if it's not with this friction problem. Hard, even the case of the friction. Okay, the rabbis would say there's no problem. Hard, even kiskus, okay, even the friction type of a thing, rabbis say there's no problem with the leather. So, what we're saying is, in the case, and the Rabbi would say that with that, yes, hard is like soft. With the kiskus, it's a problem. So, kiskus, without kiskus, you're not even beginning to have an issue by leather. Okay, with this vigorous rubbing, then you've got a problem by the soft and by the hard. So another way of looking at it is like the following. We only begin, like the whole case is only with kiskus. There is, and that's then, okay, so that's without the vigorous rubbing, that's maybe even an easier way we're saying it. Without the vigorous rubbing, it's never going to be a problem with leather, okay? With the vigorous rubbing, by soft it will be. So if your shoes are made out of soft leather, or your couch is made out of soft leather or whatever, it's still fine as long as you don't do the vigorous rubbing. Okay, and if you're dealing with hard leather, then the rabbis say even with you know, that so basically, Chayim say the same thing regardless. Chayim say soft and hard is no different. Okay, but according to the rabbanon, soft you know you know hard leather is never a problem, and it's soft leather it's combined with kisku. So basically, what we've done is we've taken this debate and we've said that e e limited it even further. Even the problem of soft is only a problem in this case of the kisku. Okay, fine. Is there a distinction between using liquid or not when you're doing this? Yeah, we're assuming that this is all with liquid. With liquid. Yeah. Okay. So, um, okay. So down the. Like, so let's say it was like you know some mud that hardened, and yeah. you want to do some vigorous rubbing to get it out. That wouldn't be laundering at all. Right. I think yeah. With, I think all this assume is liquid. Correct. Okay, so now the Gemara says like this. So basically, we're sort of what we said before, difference between hard and soft, except now we've added another point, that the only way you're going to get leather to be a problem, even with soft leather, is with, combined with this kiskus. Okay, so now the Gemara says like this. Yihachi beged nami. So if the point is that you need to have the rubbing, then why buy when this little manure gets on a, uh, a, a, a fabric pillow? Can you only use a shmata? Why can't you go ahead and even use water as long as you don't do the rubbing? If you're saying that this rubbing is a part of the process of kibus, so the Gemara says no. Begish we also zohi kibuso by 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 garments. Just water, even without the vigorous rubbing, is part of the process of cleaning. Now it's an interesting question. Does that really mean the assumption is is that just water alone gets a stain out, or? Um, it could mean something different. It could mean that by Shabbos, sometimes what is forbidden is part of, is things that are part of the process, even if they don't achieve yet the end result. And since the normal way of laundering a garment is, what do you do? You put it in the washing machine, and it fills up with water, right? <laughs> and you know, so so well, soaking some vigorous something. rubbing there too. Like yes, but that's my point. But the part the process begins with a soaking in water. And since the process begins with a soaking in water, that itself could be the doraita, even if you haven't yet mm -hmm. achieved the end result. So it's an interesting question what Shriyasa Zohi Kibuso means by, you know, by garments. But by leather, the normal process is not soaking it in water. So by leather, to the degree that there is a case that would require both the vigorous rubbing and the soft, right, that would be what you would need by the leather. But by water, but by uh, fabric, even just the water is enough. Now, there is an interesting question to uh, to sort of a little bit near Malamed Zuchus, or not really Malamed Zuchus, and not feel that people are doing do right, real do right does all the time necessarily, is not if, I'm not, to, what I'm about to say is not at all to suggest that this is mutter. But it's a question about whether it's an actual biblical violation. If somebody has a little stain and they just put water on it, is that shriyaso? Is that like, because the word shriya means like yes, submerging it in water. Mm -hmm. So if they put water on it and then they go like that and put a little soap or put a whatever, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but anyway, I'm like, okay, but that, I think, you know, that that at least is a question. What is the degree of shriyaso? Yeah, Charlie. Yeah, um, the Rashi to that Pusik we had uh, actually says that, uh, uh, kibus is immersion for that in that verse, and he cites mm -hmm. uh, Torah Kohanim. 
Okay, yeah, there you so go. I right, no, yeah, no, let's just go because we eight minutes. I want to get to the Mishnah. Okay, so the Mishnah says like this. Okay, now Rava the time may Rava goes going to his reasoning. Dama Rava Zarak Suder Lemayim Chaya. Now this, if you threw a handkerchief into water, no soap, no rubbing. Okay, presumably, but it could be that it got immersed in water. And you want to get it clean. And you want to get it clean, <laughs> right? You know, then you're chayiv on Shabbat. Zarak Pishtan Lemayim Chaya. You threw flax, your chai. Now, bishlema sudar avid kivus. That makes it laundering, like we just said. If it's a garment and it's a submerged, it's laundering. Elazara pishtan my timer. Why buy flax? That it basically causes it to sprout, like if you put flax seed into water. So but this is a garment, though. Well, right. Ella, well, take okay. Ella, Ella Hachi, Chitiv, so we see maybe flax, maybe means flax seeds. Okay, mm -hmm. the one gear is Zera Pishtan. El Ihachi, Chitiv, sorry, Nami, so it's a uh, wheat and barley as well. No. Hana, uh, Nami. Flax seeds, uh, the problem is kneading. We're getting to that. We're not oh, up to that. Okay. 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 Hanach, Islu, Islu, Riri. No, 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 no. The flax seeds, it actually get, has some type of a, uh, like, uh, strands that come out of it when they're in the water. So what does that mean? So strands come out of it, big deal. Uh, if that's true, even this shlachim, uh, which is which is what she says, what is it? How does it translate it? What's the? I forgot. I, discharges. No, 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 no. After discharge. Uh, uh, no, no. Yeah, shlachim are raw hides, right? Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Anyway, raw hides also like stuff comes out of it when you put it in water. Anyway, hasam ka'avid lisha. No. Somehow, by the case of the flax seeds, what, what's the problem? Since when can you have not guk coming out of something when you put it in the water? What's the yisr? So the yisr is that when somehow the flax seed stuff comes out, it's sort of like when you add flour, you know, water to flour, mm -hmm. right? It, the, what it does is it, it the the change, the sort of, of the, the substance change has everything sort of, cl you know, yeah. clumped together, right? So it's sort of like somebody asked Rav Moshe Feinstein about uh, Rav Eider, about mayonnaise in tuna fish. Like he said, why should that be an isra of leisha? Normally, leisha is defined like you add water to solids, to like individual pieces of solids, like flour, mm -hmm. and it makes it one big clump. So he said, uh, you know, so, so he said, well, tuna, mayonnaise in tuna fish, it's true, it makes it all like a clump, but it doesn't change the tuna fish pieces. It's just like a glue that holds the tuna fish pieces together, right? As opposed to when you add the flat water to the flour, it changes the pieces of the flour and it actually makes them all, you know, some big unified whole. So Rav Moshe was still machmir, which I find is completely bizarre. So just out of deference to Rav Moshe, although I completely don't understand it. If I have a tuna fish sandwich on Shabbos, I sort of do it like I would have like a, like, a, like yeah, I like spread the, two, the, the mayonnaise and then put the tuna on top of it. But anyway, but that's basically what this Gemara is saying, that, you know, the stuff that transforms by the flaxseed, then it all sort of becomes some homogenous, you know, Wait, wait so you're saying Misha could occur, but you're just throwing it in the water? I mean, you know, yeah, like, it really yeah if that you way. just pour I, water, I, if you pour water onto flour, you don't have to do the act of kneading. Mm -hmm. Pouring water onto flour, pouring water onto like, you know, there's a whole issue about like also oatmeal or whatever, mm -hmm. and it basically takes things that are independent units and the water transforms them. It doesn't just, you know, work like glue. It transforms them to now it becomes a homogenous mass. That's the issue. Apparently that works by flaxseed. Apparently, seed, apparently right? that's what happens by flaxseed. Yeah, yes. so it even works in flax meal. I use flax meal all the time in cooking. And you put it in water, and it becomes sticky, sticks together. It's a really great binder. Okay, there you go. Okay, so now the Gemara says like this: Darish Rava, Rava expounded. Mutar lechabes mino b'shabes, like we said before. <coughs> Here you go. Your shoes get dirty, right? As long as it's uh, if it's hard leather, and you pass them like the rabbanon, you can even rub it. And if it's uh, and if and as long as you're not rubbing it, you can certainly use water and scrape it off and whatever. Okay. Um, uh, okay, I'm going to Rav Papa by the Rava. Rav Papa said to Rava, I'm going to have a Chizim Nisagin and have a Kamina coming to Rava, Shachshu Chilim Misani Bimaya, and he sort of rubbed his his his, his shoes with water, but the Shachshu Chile is like rinsed it or whatever. It's not this vigorous rubbing. So Shachshu Chilim Avoki was low. So it's only the uh, rinsing, it's not the vigorous rubbing. So Hadaruki Rava, Mori Levadarish, then he got up and said, Varim Shamatik Ufnech and Tose and Biadi, it's a mistake. Bram Kacham, Shachshu Mutra Kivusasa or Kiskusasa. Now the question still is, What's he talking about? Is he talking about soft kiskosasa, which is what we said, right? That soft, this vigorous rubbing is forbidden. Or is he saying even hard kiskosasa, and he's possibly like the acherim and not like the rabbam? So in the end, it's not clear, right, whether how we possibly, it's a bit Martin here, 
how are we coming out on the hard debate? Is Rava's case the soft case or is Rava's case the hard case? So the upshot of this is that if your shoes get muddy on Shabbos, you can put water on it, you can scrape it off, but don't go ahead and like vigorously rub it unless you figure out whether they're considered hard and how we toss them on the hard debate. Now, <laughs> by the way, I want to read you a very important post, folks. Right? It's the thing about getting stuff wet or whatever is considered an issue on Shabbos by garments. So it's considered kiva. So that's the question. How about the fact that there's a famous Kabbalah, like you can walk through a river on Shabbos to get oh, somewhere. Yeah. What about the fact that your that that garments get wet? Why isn't that considered kibbutz? So Tosa says, well, hey, you might not be trying, but it's a equally, not equally. Anyway, Tosa says the river's dirty. If we're getting it wet is <laughs> a process of getting it stained, that's not considered laundering. And therefore, if you look at the very top line of Tosa San Ar Amud, no, it's the middle of the Tosa, the very top line of Tosa San Ar Amud, where we are, that Tosa says, so why are we not concerned with the case of the river? Because that way actually is a soiling process. It's not a cleansing process. Don't anybody go home and after you wash your hands say, oh, I can't wipe around a towel because I just learned in the Daf Yomi that when you get some, some something cloth wet on Shabbos, that's considered to be laundering. So it also says that's only when getting it wet is part of a process of cleaning it. If getting it wet is because your hands are wet and they are, and they, you know, and you just went ahead and washed your hands, and therefore you're getting the towel dirty in the process, that is not considered laundry, getting something dirty. Okay, let's finish Wait, up. And the Mishnah. about this leather is I don't know. Okay, let's finish up to the to the Mishnah. Okay, Hakivas Makam Kadosh. So the laundering takes place in all the grace. We not immediately we judge from Tanur Rabbanan to Chabes Makam Kadosh. Fine. Fair enough. How do you know breaking the pottery vessels that absorb the chatas? Okay, which is right after the Tchabez Makom Kadosh. So, the, so the, the, the juxtaposition is that it's Makom Kadosh, right? It's in the Azara. Okay, how do you know that has to be in a holy place? Again, none of that mentions a holy place, but since it's juxtaposed, juxtaposed to the holy place by the wandering, we assume that's in a holy place as well. This is the way chatas is more stringent. This halach about the blood, it only applies to a chatas. So the Gemara says, "Vesu lekas." It's the only way chatas is more stringent. Vika shenichnas dama. How lifnim? How about the fact that when the blood of a chatas goes into the inner sanctum, it invalidates, and it's not true about other sacrifices? The Gemara says, "V'chatos achitzonos." Now we're talking about outer chatos within. I'm sorry, I jumped ahead. How about the fact that there are inner such a thing as inner chataot? So that makes a chatos a more weighty korban, a more strict korban, because there exists the phenomenon of inner chataot. So it says, "V'chatos achitzonos." We're talking about outer chataot. But how about the halacha she nichna stama lifnim psula? Okay, but how about the weighty halacha b'chatas that if the blood goes on the inside, it invalidates? That only applies to a chatas. Rabbi Akiva, damer kol damim she nichna sule hecha lechaper psula. Okay, so no, Rabbi Akiva, it's not limited to a chatas. Okay, how about the fact that a chatas is weightier? She came mechapi machavi krisos that they even that they atone for sins of kares. That makes the chatas weightier. The chatas is shmi asakol. Okay, we can, no, we're talking about all, there are chataot that aren't like that, like a chatas about, uh, about <coughs> not testifying and swearing about not testifying, but whatever. So not all chataot have that weightiness that they atone for kares. We're, we're just talking about the kibbutz though in our mission. We Why said, we but we said, this is the way the aspect Regarding what we're talking about. We're going to get to that. She came to an arba matanot. How about the fact that a chatas is weightier, that you, you put it out four applications of blood? Rabbi Shmuel, Damar Kol Dumin Tuni Marba Matanot. Rabbi Shmuel says that all bloods you put four applications, not the two that are four, but four applications on the four walls. So Mar says, I'll, um, but how about the fact that Al Arba Karnot, Karnot? Okay, but even because Rabbi Shmuel, the four is on the walls, the chatos gets put up at the corners. You could also say how about the Allah of the Barei Chatos a Shalom Lishma invalidates, but maybe you would have the Korban Pesach is like it. That's not unique. Anyway, the Gemara says, "Why are you only asking about the corners, about the horns?" Karen, I mean, the very fact that it's a horn at all, not just the four horns. Heika etzba that use your finger. Heika chuda, it's at the it's at the edge of the corner. It's not saying all oh, the ways chatas is stringent. This in this in, by this thing of blood, that's one of the ways the chatas is more stringent. By the way, Zachat is more stringent as well. Fine. Okay, we'll pick right. up with the Mishnah tomorrow. No, but about the couch, I mean, I think that's what we say, right?